The top stories tonight and why news. The COVID-19 surge driven by the highly transmissible Omicron variant has peaked in Metro Manila, according to the Department of Health. Medical groups have joined hands to ask President Rodrigo Duterte to veto the passage of the vape bill, which they say would bring harm to the public, especially the youth. And local pump prices of petroleum products are set to increase again this week, while bakers seek an increase in bread prices. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, January 24, 2022. I am Hardin Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Pico. First in the news. COVID-19 cases in the national capital region already peaked, according to the Department of Health, projecting a decline of daily cases in the region. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. The highest number of COVID-19 cases recorded in a day was on January 10, with over 18,000 cases, according to Okta Research Group. Professor Guido David said the number of cases in the national capital region gradually declined since then. Simula January 15, uh, masasabi natin na sim- uh, patuloy nang bumababa yung bilang na kaso hanggang sa ngayon, kahapon nga 5,000 na lang. So malaki na iba na ba? From 18,000 down to 5,400 uh, ang laking improvement at kaya ayun nga yung projection natin hopefully patuloy na hanggang Valentine's baka less than 1,000, baka end of February baka less than 500 na lang at ma- med- mababalik na natin yung kalagayan natin tulad ng nakita natin ng November and December uh, sa buong bansa. Pero sa Metro Manila pa lang yan. Okta projects daily cases in the region would be around 1,000 by mid-February which can push the national government to lower the alert level restrictions in NCR. Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III also said Metro Manila is prepared in case restrictions ease due to the lowering of cases. However, it is still too early to say if the interagency task force will approve the easing of restrictions in NCR. Duque said the IATF will still consider the metrics such as the hospital utilization rate. Pero pag-uusapan pa rin yan mamaya sa IETF, rather on Thursday, baka kailangan, kailangan ay uh, tingnan na rin kung talaga naman malinaw na ang uh, healthcare utilization rate ay uh, nagkaroon na ng pagbabaklas, ano, yung decoupling. No? Kung baga tumakas ang kaso, mm. okay, pero yung, yung uh, kwan natin, yung uh, mga severe critical, asa baba. Okay? So, may decoupling kung tawagin. Uh, baka pag-usapan niya na uh, pwede na, uh, na magbabato alert level 2. Kung mapapanatili natin itong trend, so based dito sa trend nito, ito, uh, maaaring uh, by Valentine's, at sana, sana maging masaya yung Valentine's natin, ay baka nasa less than 1,000 cases na lang tayo per day sa Metro Manila. Pag uh, less than 1,000, baka nasa moderate risk na lang tayo at um, you know, may possibility na pwedeng uh, iluwag ng IATF at ng Department of Health yung uh, alert level, ibaba nila to, uh, sa isang sa mas maluwag na alert level. Based on the monitoring of DOH, the hospital bed capacity and ICU utilization rate in NCR are at low risk. Hospital utilization rate in other areas, meanwhile, are at high to critical risk, which the IATF is also monitoring. Aside from Metro Manila, the Okta Research Group also monitor a decline of COVID-19 cases in Cavite, Bulacan, and Rizal. Experts continue to remind the public to adhere to the health and safety protocols, especially in areas with high number of COVID-19 cases. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines, meanwhile, recorded 24,938 new cases of COVID-19, pushing the nationwide case count to 3,442,056. Of this, 262,997 are active cases. Its data showed that 
250,235 are mild, 7,944 are asymptomatic, 3,010 are moderate, 1,499 are severe, while 309 are in critical condition. The DOH also reported 35,461 new recoveries, bringing the total to 3,124,540, while 47 have died, bringing the total death toll from COVID-19 to 53,519. Five laboratories were not able to submit their data on time. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 351 million. 595,898, while the deaths have surged to 5,596,753, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 70,700,678 and 866,540, respectively, according to the CSSC. In terms of infections, India follows with 39,543,328 cases and 489,848 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 623,370 fatalities. Malacanang urges the public to refrain from sharing this information on COVID-19 vaccine booster shots. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles made a clarification about a video clip of President Rodrigo Duterte being shared and utilized by some against the administration of COVID-19 vaccine booster shots. The President made the statement on September 30, 2021. Tama na yung dalawang doses. Huwag ninyong suran. Delikado. At alam mo, when you do that in multiple, hindi ka magsabi ng totoo, you deprive your countrymen, the others na hindi pa, sa isang bakuna na maibigay doon sa kapwa mo tao. Ganun yan eh. Pag masyado kayo na mayroong iba, may second, third, fourth, fifth, hindi naman kailangan. And it does not add really to the full protection of your body. You can even uh, get uh, contaminated again. The palace official said the statement was made when around 21 million Filipinos were fully vaccinated and the government's priority was to increase the vaccination rate. It was also during this time when booster shots were not yet approved. Secretary Nograles reiterated the situation today is now greatly different because we have ample supplies of vaccine and a substantial percentage of the population was already fully vaccinated. The Food and Drug Administration has also approved the use of booster doses for all fully vaccinated. He added there is a clear evidence that COVID-19 booster shots provide additional protection against the virus. The palace called on the public to refrain from sharing this information that will endanger the lives of fellow Filipinos and will compromise the efforts to contain COVID-19. Based on the recent report of the government, 57.2 million Filipinos have already received complete dose, while 6.2 million have already been boosted. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Transportation Department is now considering other public terminals such as docks, airports, and train stations to serve as vaccination sites for passengers. J.P. Duñez will tell us why. Transportation officers are now tasked to identify areas such as public terminals that may serve as vaccination sites. DOTR Undersecretary Artemio Tuazon explains that the newly launched mobile vaccination at the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange was under the said plan. They are also identifying other public transport terminals to conduct vaccination drive, such as in docks, airports, train stations, and exit points from expressways. Alalahanin natin, umpisa pa lang po ito. Ito pa lang po yung una. Pinag-utos na po ni Secretary Tugade sa amin lahat na tingnan na rin po at pag-aralan yung paglalagay ng mga vaccination center sa ating mga puerto, sa ating mga airport, pati yung ibang terminal natin or stations ng rail, pati na rin po yung ating mga ibang yung 
At PIT Axis 1, pero titingnan po natin yung ibang integrated uh, terminals natin kung pwede na rin natin malagyan ng vaccination center. The mobile vaccination at the PITX aims to provide convenience to passengers and public transport vehicle drivers to get vaccinated or receive their booster dose. It is also available for walk-ins. However, minors are not advised to get their COVID vaccines at the PITX. AstraZeneca vaccine is the only brand available on the site. The program aims to inoculate at least 500 individuals per day until Friday, January 20. But the MMDA may reconsider to extend the vaccination drive depending on the vaccination demand of passengers and other personnel in the terminal. We could extend, Maki. Uh, it depends on PTEX. Kami, yung tao namin, we can always deploy them anytime, anywhere. It will depend because we have to look at the demand. Eh. Kung malus wala na papabakuna, di ba? Oo, tindi, pag kami, it's just a pilot, let us see the demand first. Huh? Kung madami encouraging, why not? Talaga dito kami, hindi na kami alis dito. Passengers going to provinces took the opportunity to get their vaccine dose at the terminal while waiting for their rides. Actually, pauwi na kasi ako sa amin. Eh, magpapabaksin sana ako doon. Eh, nakita ko meron dito. So, dumaan na ako para di na punta doon. Sobrang ganda kasi hindi ko na kailangan pumunta doon sa lugar namin. Eh, di pag pauwi ako, diretso na ako sa bahay. Hindi ko na kailangan dumaan doon. Actually ma'am, mayroon akong ano, may schedule sa February 3 sa, doon sa Kabete, last ma. Eh, nakita ko lang po na ito, opportunity, hindi ano ko na lang para din ako magkita ng February 3. The mobile vaccination schedule at the PITX is from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, urged all parents to refrain from tagging along their unvaccinated minor children in public places. Lea Ilagan reports why. The Philippine National Police recognizes the fact that restricting minors to go outdoors in areas under alert levels 2 and 3 may not be applicable since the IATF guideline allows them to travel outside. PNP spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Roderick Augustus Alba said, It has been a challenge to PNP personnel who are conducting regular monitoring of public places. The task may be more challenging sa areas under alert level 2 and 3 kasi wala namang age restrictions sa mga gustong lumabas. But we have this shared responsibility to protect each other from the further spread of the virus. Alba said, PNP Chief Police General Leonardo Carlos reminds the police personnel to always remind parents on the safety of their kids. Alba adds they respect the decision of the parents bringing their children outside their homes when attending to essential activities, but they need to follow the public health standards. PNP Chief General Leonardo Carlos is given an instruction sa ating mga PNP na magbabantay sa public places to always be mindful sa mga minors na lumalabas. Kahit may kasama silang mga adult, as much as possible, remind them not to blend with the crowd and follow the minimum public health standard. He adds, since the pediatric inoculation is still ongoing, minors who are yet to get vaccinated must be cautious all the time. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Marikina City Police arrested and filed a complaint against two suspects allegedly manufacturing and selling fake vaccination cards in Marikina City. Janice Ingente reports. Two women who were caught making and selling fake vaccination cards were arrested in an entrapment operation and now in the custody of Marikina City Police. Based on the police investigation, the suspects allegedly made fake vaccination cards at the computer shop where they worked in Barangay Tumana, Marikina City. Suspects were identified as Rovelin Liburel, 37 years old, a computer attendant, and Alma Ramirez, 43 years old, both presently residing in Barangay Tumana, Marikina City. May nag-report actually no? uh, at nagkanda kami ng uh, investigation. No? Ito ay tugon na rin dun sa mahigpit na implementation ng ating uh, local IATF dito no? sa pag ng ating mayor at ng pamahalang lungsod. 
nung nagkaroon kami ng uh, investigation, no? uh, nakita talaga namin na mayroong ginagawang ganon. So, nagplano kami ng by bus operation, no? uh, at may nagpanggap na bumili, at nagpagawa, talagang uh, na-confirm naman na talagang may ginagawang ganon. Ibibigay lang yung picture, gagawa na siya ng finished product. That's it. The two suspects are facing charges for violating Republic Act 3815 or falsification of public documents and RA11525 or COVID-19 Vaccination Act of 2021 where they can be imprisoned up to six months and receive a fine of up to 50,000 pesos. Marikina PNP also recovered fake vaccine cards and a set of computers used to make fake vaccination cards wherein suspects sell them for 250 pesos each. One good thing ay uh, hindi pa naman talaga ganun ka, ano, ka grabe o kalala yung uh, propagation ng uh, vaccination card natin. No? Uh, isolated cases lamang naman yan dahil uh, mabuti nga at na-prevent natin. Hindi pa rin kami nagkukumpiyansa at uh, patuloy pa rin naman ang uh, pagbabantay natin ng mga ganun. Ano? Authorities reminded the public not to patronize fake vaccination cards. Instead, go to vaccination sites and get vaccinated to get legitimate vaccination cards, which they can use especially now that there are restrictions implemented for unvaccinated individuals. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III supports the call of medical societies to veto the vape bill. Aiko Miguel explains why. Medical societies emphasize that Senate Bill 2239 or the vape regulation bill is deemed as anti-health, anti-children and anti-youth. They also called it an injustice to the health of Filipino people leading to nicotine addiction. Philippine College of Physicians or PCP President Dr. Maricar Limpin said, approval of the bill does not go with the legacy of President Duterte. Mr. President, we appeal to you to veto the bill, the vape bill in its entirety. Dahil ito po ay isang deregulasyon ng e-cigarettes and ng heated tobacco products. Mr. President, uh, yung vape bill na ito will actually break the vow that you made to the Filipino people to fight addiction. Ang mangyayari yun ito, it will even increase addiction to cigarettes, to alcohol, at ng mga illicit drugs. Philippine Medical Association President Dr. Benito Atienza also emphasized that this would endanger the lives of the younger population as the vape regulation bill would allow them to freely purchase and use vape. Yung e cigarette na dati po ay dalawa ay magiging 11 at pinaba, pinababa po ang edad na pwedeng gumamit ito na dapat po ay 21 years old. Nang ang mga baby stores ay nasa ano po, nasa mga harapan ng ating eskwelahan. Dr. Cory Avancenia of the Philippine Pediatric Society and Philippine Academy of Pediatric Pulmonologists said vaping would also lead them to a habit of addiction. Former Food and Drug Administration Director General Eric Domingo also said the regulation of vape products should be headed by the FDA and not the Department of Trade and Industry. Senate Bill 2239 authorizes the DTI as the regulatory body tasked with the regulation of vape juice or chemicals. The existing Law Republic Act 11467 only allows the DTI to regulate vaping device and not the nicotine liquid used for vaping. The vapes must be regulated by the proper and competent authority to regulate them. Hindi naman po basta-basta ito produkto. Hindi naman to katulad ng consumer products or construction materials na bakal, pako, o yung mga tubo, kakoy na gagamitin sa bahay. Ang vape po ay isang bagay na sinusunog, pinapasok sa baga ng tao, pagkatapos meron po itong pharmacologic at physiologic effects sa ating katawan. Ang nicotina po ay registered at listed sa Pilipinas as a drug. The health products have to be registered by FDA. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III backs their call and said vaping will only bring damage to health and endanger the lives of Filipino youth. Uh, talagang uh, kami ay sumasangayon at sumusuporta sa posisyon na 
ang uh, mga iba't ibang uh, associations no na nagpakita ng kanilang uh, disgusto uh, for uh, the vape bill. No? Senate Bill number no. 2239 has yet to be ratified by the Senate and House of Representatives before it reaches the office of the President for signature. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Labor Secretary Sylvester Abello III is in favor of Senate Bill 2475 or the Workers' Rest Bill seeking to prohibit employers from demanding work and contacting employees without consent during rest hours. According to Bello, the Labor Department supports the proposal as it will protect workers from working beyond their working time. However, they have reservations on the issue of penalizing the employers. Under the bill filed by Senator Francis Tolentino, an employee may not be compelled to render overtime work unless otherwise allowed by Section 89 of the Labor Code or unless the employee freely gives his or her written consent. The employer or manager is also prohibited to require the employee to work or to be on duty during rest hours unless the employee gives consent. Contacting the employee for work and work-related purposes through phone, email, message, or other communication means during resting hours is also prohibited unless it is for the purpose of notifying the employee of the need to render emergency or urgent work as provided under the labor code. Those who will violate the provision shall be shall pay the employee 1,000 pesos per hour of work rendered, provided that there is a substantial evidence to prove the violation and number of hours worked. If the assertion of the employee of his or her rights resulted in discrimination, the offender shall be penalized with imprisonment of not less than one month and not more than six months and a fine of not less than 100,000 pesos. 30-year-old Miki Alonso, who works in the BPO industry under a work-from-home work arrangement, also welcomes the proposal. My office is set up inside my bedroom. So, hindi mo na talaga namamalayan yung oras kasi you don't get out a lot. Magugulat ka nalang you're working for 16 hours straight, 14 hours straight na. I think consent is very important, you know, with everything you do. It's a sign of respect and it's also a sign of how employers could take care of their employees. The Associated Labor Unions Trade Union Congress of the Philippines or ALUTUCP also welcomes the measure, noting that it is long overdue since a lot of employees have been experiencing over fatigue since the pandemic began. Kahit na lagpas na sa oras ay nagkatrabaho pa rin sila, no? Sumasagot pa rin sila sa mga email, sumasagot pa rin sila sa mga chat groups, sumasagot pa rin sila sa mga SMS texts. At uh, sumasagot pa rin sila sa mga tawag kahit lagpas na doon sa itinakdang walong oras na trabaho. The Labor Group hopes the measure will be passed before the current Congress adjourns. Manila Mayor Esco Moreno, Senator Manny Pacquiao, and Vice President Lenny Robredo expressed their willingness to join another round of presidential interview or debate. Meanwhile, former Senator Bongo Marcos Jr. vowed to reorganize the country's health care system. El Maribojo will tell us why. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso attended the ceremony for the use of seven new trucks of the Department of Public Services. In an ambush interview, he said he is willing to participate in succeeding presidential interviews or debates if his schedule permits. Uh, we submit ourselves to uh, regular uh, uh, applicant sa I think uh, uh, na tayo. Uh, at marinig, uh, bawat kandidat. Senator Manny Pacquiao is also ready to face media interviews. Pacquiao said he is ready to face in any debate or forum and he welcomes any opportunities to present his plans for the country since he has no political ads yet on TVs and radios. Meanwhile, Vice President Lenny Robredo clarifies that she did not decline a radio interview. She said the new schedule set by the radio station was already in conflict with her schedule.
Robredo said she is ready for the next week's interview and emphasized that she is always ready to face media interviews. VP Robredo is now in Sambuanga to visit communities that are beneficiaries of their program Angat Buhay. In his FB post, Senator Panfilo Lacson said he wants to prioritize the digitalization of the government's processes. Lacson explains the digitalization of transactions will aid in preventing corruption in government. In a news release, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos vows to reorganize the healthcare system to ensure that the dysfunctions that the country experienced during the pandemic will not repeat in the future. Marco said he was saddened when he saw the medical practitioners walk out and organized a rally because their special risk allowance was not given to them. Nel Maribuho, QNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And in other news, the Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, is optimistic that they can finish the printing of ballots for the 2022 elections on time despite the pandemic. Dante Amento tells us why live. Yes, uh, Dante, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, William. Commission on Elections Printing Committee Vice Chairperson Attorney Helen Aguila Flores disclosed that the printing of ballots for the May 9, 2022 national and local elections is proceeding earlier compared to the previous elections. Even former Comelec Commissioner Attorney Louis Guia said it is proceeding earlier than 2016 and 2019 elections. Thus, the poll body is optimistic to finish the ballots printing on time despite the current COVID-19 constraints. The agency also prepared contingencies in case of possible problems such as setbacks in the printing machine. Yesterday, we started the printing of the ATS ballots for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. We are happy that we started in the second half of January, much earlier than in 2019, when the printing started sometime in February. We are hoping that with this early start or timely start, we could have a buffer period for uh, possible contingencies. Last Friday, the Comelec has started the printing of manual ballots for the local absentee voting. It was followed by the ballots for the overseas voting. Meanwhile, for the local voting, the printing of the over 2.5 million ballots for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao began yesterday. The printing of the official ballots is now ongoing. Actually, we are already more or less on into our fourth day today. Because on January 20, we already successfully started the printing of the local absentee ballots. William the Paul body targets to print over 67.4 million ballots for the 2022 polls. The last week of the printing of ballots will be on April 12 to 21, 2022, a week before the local absentee voting begin on April 27 to 29. And that's our latest slide from Quezon City. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you. Dante Amento reporting live from Quezon City. The Department of Trade and Industry Studies will look into the request of bakers to raise the prices of bread. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources will investigate the alleged overpricing of fish by some traders. Asher Kadapan Jr. reports. The staggering price increase of flour since December 2021 has been affecting the revenues of bakers. With this, a group of bakery owners has been requesting the Department of Trade and Industry to allow them to increase the price of bread, particularly Pinoy Tasty and Pinoy Pandesal. Phil Baking says they may opt to stagger the increase to protect the consumers from the potential impact. In a statement, Phil Baking President John Lukoa says they plan to increase the price to around 2 pesos per pack in each price movement. The DTI, however, vows to study the request of the bakers. Meanwhile, a group of fisher folks appeal to the government to create and implement a policy that will regulate the price of fish, especially the local round scud or galunggong. 
Pamalakaya Vice Chairperson Bobby Roldan explains that this is due to the very high cost being added by fish traders to the fish price. The fisher folk says the farm gate price of Galunggong currently amounts to about 120 pesos per kilo only, but its market price goes up to about 250 pesos per kilo. Dapat ito ay pakialaman na ng gobyerno natin para magkaroon ng, ng price control yung ano, para hindi masyadong makapagsamantala yung mga malalaking kapitalista na siyang nagbibiyahe at yun din naman yung mga nagpapautang doon sa mga ma maliliit na mga maing isda at sila yung mga namumuhunan. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, on the other hand, explains that the operational cost by fish traders will be a significant increase to the price of fish but should not be overpriced. BFAR Director Eduardo Gongona says they will have to conduct investigations to verify such incidents. By logistics, they went to other places, right? They went to the market, they went to the telepapa, and, uh, and uh, other markets. nagkakaroon ng handling tissue. So, nagmamahal siya. Diba? Pero, kung sobra naman, eh, talagang uh, patitignan po natin yan na higit. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Local pump prices of petroleum products are set to increase this week as announced by oil firms this week. In separate advisories, Filipina Shell, Petroleum Corporation, and Sea Oil Philippines Incorporated said they will hike the prices per liter of gasoline by 1 peso and 45 centavos, diesel by 1 peso and 90 centavos, and kerosene by 1 peso and 70 centavos. Clean Fuel and Petrogas also said they will implement the same price adjustments except for kerosene. This marks the fourth straight week of price increases this year. The oil price hike will take effect on Tuesday, January 25. Other oil firms have yet to make similar announcements for the week. And for the news abroad, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern puts her wedding on hold as New Zealand moves into red light COVID-19 setting. Mar Marvita Finn will give us a details live. Yes, Marvi. Marielle, the country's most high-profile upcoming wedding has been impacted by tighter gathering rules under New Zealand's newly implemented COVID-19 red light rules. The announcement came after nine cases of the Omicron variant were detected among a family from the Nelson Marlborough region who traveled by plane to Auckland to attend a wedding and other events. Initial estimates suggest more than 100 contacts, while a flight attendant on the family's flight also tested positive and has flown on several flights while infectious. On Sunday midnight, New Zealand moved to a red alert level. Ardern clarified that this was not a lockdown and that under these red restrictions, schools and businesses can remain open and domestic travel can continue. However, the government imposed mandates for mask wearing and social distancing, as well as a cap for 100 customers indoors in hospitality settings and events, or 25 people if venues are not using vaccine passes. Despite the 100 allowed vaccinated guests, Ardern said her wedding would not proceed in a restricted form and she apologized for those caught up in the same situation. When asked how she felt about her wedding cancellation, here is what Prime Minister Ardern had to say. Oh, <laughs> such is life. All right, anything else? We'll finish with you, Amelia. Oh, I am no different uh, to... Uh, dare I say it, thousands of other New Zealanders who have had uh, much more devastating impacts felt by the pandemic. The most gutting of which is the inability to be with a loved one sometimes when they're gravely ill. That will far, far outstrip any sadness I experience. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Marvidal Finn, for that live report. The Chinese government has ordered a mass coronavirus testing in a Beijing district ahead of the Winter Olympics. Maeve and Dog will tell us why live. Yes, Maeve, go ahead. 
Moriel, authorities have told people in high-risk areas of the capital to not leave the city. After 25 cases were reported in the Fangtai district and 14 more in other areas. The government is tightening China's zero-tolerance strategy as Beijing prepares to open the 2022 Winter Games on February 4. Fangtai residents lined up at testing sites in freezing weather on Sunday, as 56 new cases were confirmed nationwide, 37 of which are believed to have been acquired overseas. City government spokesman Xu Hajan said Beijing should take the most resolute, decisive and strict measures to prevent the transmission of the virus. The upcoming Olympics will be held under strict controls, which will involve isolating athletes and attendees from the outside world. They are also required to be vaccinated and will undergo quarantine upon arrival. Currently, China has more than 118,000 confirmed cases and around 4,800 deaths, according to data by the Center for Systems Science Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. Marielle? Thank you, Megan Dog, for that live report. After demands were made to enforce economic sanctions on Russia, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken rejected the idea, stating that it would only undermine the ability of the West to redirect potential Russian aggression against Ukraine. Following this, Blinken claimed that if Russian force does enter Ukraine in an aggressive manner, that is where a significant response will be triggered. Contrary to the Secretary of State, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of the Ukraine, supports the imposition of sanctions. Meanwhile, the United States' first shipment of their security package for Ukraine, worth at $200 million, arrived in Kyiv, the capital city, on Saturday. Health officials in British Columbia are allowing COVID-positive patients and double-vaccinated patients to share hospital rooms. Ruth Bahe tells us why live. Yes, Ruth, please go ahead. Marielle, Fraser Health Authority have allowed sharing of rooms between COVID positive and double vax patient as part of maximizing space in healthcare facilities amid a rapidly mounting hospitalization rate due to the more infectious Omicron variant. British Columbia Health Officer Dr. Boney Henry said that precaution would be put in place if double vaccinated patients were placed with COVID positive patients in the same room. And it really is about maximizing our ability to provide care to people. So we've been looking at how many people are admitted to hospital uh, where their a test on admission um, is positive. So it's an incidental finding. It's not the reason for being in hospital and they don't have uh, respiratory illness related to COVID. And in those cases, um, being able to maximize the use of, of space if needed um, with additional precautions in place as we would for um, people admitted with other respiratory illnesses. Uh, so that is an infection prevention and control uh, team decision made at at, uh, at a hospital by hospital and actually room by room and ward by ward basis, uh, depending on the needs in that facility. Hospital beds are placed a minimum of two meters away from any other patients in the shade room. This new policy of sharing rooms doesn't include putting immunocompromised people with COVID positive patients, and they must be either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic in order to share rooms. While those experiencing significant symptoms will continue to be placed in COVID-19 only cohorts. Marielle? Ruth, is this policy limited only to uh, Fraser Health? And uh, for people who are not familiar with this term COVID-19 cohorts, could you explain what this means? Muriel, it is not clear if this policy covers other hospitals in British Columbia, other than the 12 hospitals that are under Fraser Health. Now, as for COVID-19 cohorting, it only means assigning different patients into different groups based on the risk of infection, whether they have tested positive for COVID-19 or not, for the purposes of disease management. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, reporting live from Vietnam. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 5, it says, 
Open rebuke is better than secret love. Those are the reasons behind the news January 24, 2022. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Emmanuel Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Pero pag-uusapan pa rin yan mamaya sa IETF, rather on Thursday, Baka kailangan-kailangan ay uh, tingnan na rin kung talaga naman malinaw na ang uh, healthcare utilization rate ay uh, nagkaroon na ng pagbabaklas, ano, yung decoupling. No? Kung baga tumakas ang kaso, mm. okay, pero yung, yung uh, kwan natin, yung uh, mga severe critical, asa baba. Okay? So, may decoupling kung tawagin. Uh, baka pag-usapan yan na uh, uh, pwede na uh, uh, na magbabato alert level 2. Mr. President, we appeal to you to veto the bill, the vape bill in its entirety. Dahil ito po ay isang deregulasyon ng e-cigarettes and ng heated tobacco products. Mr. President, uh, yung vape bill na ito will actually break the vow that you made to the Filipino people to fight addiction. Ang mangyayari yun ito, it will even increase addiction to cigarettes, to alcohol, at ng mga illicit drugs. Dapat ito ay pakialaman na ng, pakialaman na ng gobyerno natin para eh, eh, magkaroon ng ng price control yung ano, para hindi masyadong makapagsamantala yung mga malalaking kapitalista.